I wanted to share my personal experience about living in two of the most popular digital nomad locations around the world. We're talking about Thailand and Mexico. So after watching this video, you will have a good idea of what life is like in both countries. Let's get started talking about the dating scene, something that's really important for the guy nomads. You know, you want to go to one of these two countries and you just aren't sure, you know, where do I have better chances in Mexico or Thailand? Well, let's break it down. Mexico Mexico would maybe be easier to date someone there because first of all Spanish is a lot easier to learn it's easier to communicate in Spanish if you already know Spanish or if you know English it's gonna be much easier for you to learn Spanish than Thai and we're gonna get to Thailand in just a moment here but generally speaking the dating scene in Mexico can be good can be bad what do I mean by that well if we take a look at the Caribbean side of Mexico a lot of people come and go you know the high season starts in like November and lasts until maybe March April so you really have four to five months you know where you have a ton of tourists especially from North America you know Canada United States as well as Europe you have a ton of people come to Mexico you know trying to get out of the bad weather so it's very touristy on that side but anyway the point I'm trying to make here about dating is that a lot of people that live in Mexico's Caribbean are actually not from Quintana Roo you know they are from different parts of Mexico you know they moved there with their family you know so they are already married you know some people are locals I understand that but generally speaking dating in Quintana Roo is not as good as dating in northern or central Mexico so it really depends on where you're going but if you want a good dating scene in Mexico then you want to go to central Mexico we're talking about you know Mexico City Guadalajara uh, Leon if we take a look at Thailand very different scene right in Thailand the language barrier is definitely more prominent um, if you go to the rural areas in Thailand if you're in Bangkok you're gonna find a ton of people that speak English well they may not speak English perfectly fluently you know there's enough there for you to communicate with them with the girls which is great that's what guys want but you have to know that learning Thai is a lot more difficult than learning Spanish you know it's not the same language you know if they don't use the alphabet you know and one word has multiple meanings depending on how you say it well there's a lot fewer words in Thai language than you know they are in Spanish language which is good but on the negative you know you may not feel very motivated by the fact that you need to learn Thai in order to have a relationship with a Thai which may not be necessary depending on her English proficiency that's just something you want to know but generally speaking Thai women are very open to dating foreigners because foreigners have been coming to Thailand for decades for a very long time so for them dating a foreigner is just normal it happens every day it's not something unusual like it is in other countries you know especially Middle Eastern countries so having success dating in Thailand is actually quite easy Age gap in Thailand is less of a problem than it is in Mexico meaning if you go to Thailand and you're in your 50s 60s and 70s don't be surprised if you have the opportunity to date a girl in her 20s or 30s it happens all the time and that's something that empowers men that are looking for a younger girlfriend would maybe be much harder to find in Mexico even though finding a younger woman in Mexico may not be impossible but certainly more difficult than in Thailand many of my subscribers ask about the visa situation in both countries and that's important because at the end of the day you need to have some kind of long-term visa to live in both countries now if we take a look at Mexico Mexico has a very liberal tourist visa system you can get a 180 day tourist visa well it is no longer guaranteed meaning if you're flying from overseas chances are you may not be given 180 days anymore especially if you have a lot of history in the country if you've been visiting a lot in the past or if you have stayed in Mexico for years over the past time over the past years then you know you may not get 180 days but what you can do is you can just take a flight to a border city you know and go to the visa office at the border pay for it and get 180 days there which is almost a guarantee at this point in time obviously things can change but Mexico has a very liberal tourist visa system but that's just one aspect of it right you can also get temporary residence in Mexico at this moment in time it just takes a monthly account balance of roughly $35,000 to secure a temporary residency in Mexico 
Mexico, which is definitely good because it's not money that needs to be spent. It's not money that needs to be invested in something like real estate. No, you just need to prove economic solvency. And if you can, you can get temporary residency in Mexico. Same with permanent residency. How do we look in Thailand? Well, in Thailand, you can also get a six month tourist visa, but you need to apply for that at the embassy or consulate in your home country. So before you go to Thailand, you apply for it at the consulate or embassy in your home country. Now that gives you six months. And that's great because if you don't do that and you're just flying to Thailand, you only get 30 days, which isn't a whole lot. Well, you could extend it for another 30 days, giving you a total of six 60 days, but that's still not a whole lot of time, right? But that's just one aspect, the tourist visa system. In case you want to stay in Thailand for the long term, you can get the Thai elite visa, which costs you 600,000 Thai baht for five years or 1 million Thai baht for 20 years. So we're talking like what, 30, $32,000 for 20 years or roughly $18,000 for five years, which is not the cheapest of options. I understand that, but it still is a good option for somebody that just wants to pay a flat fee and be granted access for two decades or five years, depending on how much time you want to spend in the kingdom. Thailand also has a retirement visa. So in case you're above 50 and you have stable income, you can obviously also apply for that, which is a great option because it only requires either income proof or a deposit into a Thai bank account. And again, it gives you a lot of access. You know, you can renew it every couple of years, you know, no investment needed, nothing like that. So you just prove economic solvency by either showing, you know, how much money you have or by depositing money into a local bank account. Another very important point is of course, Towards the cost of living, which varies a lot throughout Mexico. If we take a look at Mexico's Caribbean, which is comparable to parts of Thailand, because you know the weather is very similar, the beaches are similar, you know, it has just some similarities, you know, the culture is not the same, but in terms of weather and sceneries, it can be a little bit similar. But if we take a look at the cost of living in Quintana Roo, you know, we're talking like Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, Bacalar, uh, the island of Cozumel, Isla Mujeres, you know, all these places, generally speaking, from November through March, April, it's pretty expensive to stay there because there is mass tourism taking place during the high season, obviously. Now, the weather is good. You know, the sceneries are great. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to see. It is just a great time. You know, I spent the last winter in Quintana Roo and I really liked it. You know, but in terms of affordability, it may not be very affordable for people that have a very low income or that have limited savings because it is more expensive than in Thailand. Central Mexico is much cheaper, especially if you can stay out of some of the more popular tourist destinations. So unless, of course, you want to live in like you know, Roma Norte, uh, you're probably going to pay a lot less than what it would cost you in Quintana Roo. I mean, you can you know, find a long-term rental for just a few hundred dollars a month. And if you want to live simple, you can definitely achieve that in central Mexico. And, you know, generally speaking, the food in central Mexico is also very affordable. There's much more variety than in Quintana Roo, because in Quintana Roo, like I already pointed out, a lot of people from other parts of Mexico move there. And, you know, there's just not the same food variety as you get when you live or just stay in central Mexico. How do we look in terms of cost of living in Thailand? Thailand is just one of the more affordable countries where really anybody can live. Even if you just earn like $1,500 or $2,000 a month, you can live in Thailand very comfortably with that money. That's really plenty because you can get a studio one bedroom apartment for as little as two to $300 a month. Now, Bangkok is just one thing, right? If you want to go live in say, you know, Chiang Mai, you know, where the weather is definitely cooler during certain months of the year, you know, and there's not as much tourism, obviously, you can definitely pay less than what you're paying in Bangkok. You know, the islands of Koh Samui, Phuket, you know, it's very different there depending on how lavish you want to live. Do you want to have a pool villa? But you can definitely, you know, find a decent apartment for just a few hundred dollars a month. So generally speaking, Thailand is a lot more affordable than Mexico's Caribbean because for people to come to Thailand, they have to get on a long distance flight. You know, if people want to fly from Canada or the US into Mexico's Caribbean, uh, it's just maybe a two to three hour flight for some of them if they're coming from the Southern States, you know, obviously much uh, longer distance to cover for Canadians, but still, you know, it's not as far as Thailand. So it's cheaper to go there and, you know, people can just come for like a week or two weeks and that 
of course elevates the prices in Mexico a lot. Who doesn't like Thai food? I mean, Thailand is just a food paradise and it's so cheap. Like you can go out to the food court and you can have dinner for as little as five dollars and get full with that money, you know? Something that would be very difficult to accomplish in Mexico's Caribbean. And Thai food is very spicy, it's very diverse, you know, there's so much variety. It is just crazy. It would take me an hour to talk about all the dishes there are. Something that we cannot forget to talk about is safety. And what I mean by safety is simply everything. What are the chances of you getting kidnapped? What are the chances of you getting robbed at knife point, at gunpoint? What are the chances of, of you getting screwed over by corrupt police? We all know that Mexico has kind of a dicey reputation and it's very unfortunate that it happened this way because Mexico is such a beautiful country. It's very diverse. You have different climates, different sceneries. Uh, the culture is very different depending on whether you're in the south, central Mexico, uh, Mexico's Caribbean. It's so different, right? But on the negative, the safety has always been an issue in Mexico. You know, the federal police in Mexico is making sure that tourists stay safe, especially in the resorts in Quintana Roo, you know, in the city. There is a lot of police federal everywhere there. And that, you know, makes people more secure. It makes some people more secure. It makes some people less secure because they think if there's more police, chances are things are more prone to happen there. And that's of course true. But what I want to point out here is that in Mexico, you really have to be aware of when you go somewhere, who you go with, who you trust, who you don't trust, because obviously there is more crime than there is in Thailand. And you really have to be careful at bars. You know, some people get drugged, then they get robbed. You know, so many things happen. You know, especially if you're out at late night, chances are the police is gonna pull you over or you get stopped by the police. They're gonna ask you for your papers, you know? And it happened on many occasions that just money had been stolen from people's wallets. It happens all the time in Mexico. So in Mexico, definitely be careful. There are certain areas that you shouldn't visit and there are certain times, you know, where you just need to be aware of many things. How do we look in Thailand? Well, Thailand is definitely safer than Mexico. If we take a look at the crime indexes of both countries and compare them, you know, we see a lot less violent crimes happening in Thailand than in Mexico. And I'm not trying to praise Thailand here. I'm just looking at the data and the facts. And the facts are that Thailand is very safe, with the exception of maybe some of the southern provinces, you know, where there is sometimes conflict, where you have to be more careful. But generally speaking, if you go to like Bangkok, if you go to Chiang Mai, to Pattaya, to the islands, uh, chances are you're never going to get robbed at knife point, at gunpoint. I've never heard such a story happening in Thailand. I've heard it from many people in Mexico who it happened to. And in Thailand, I've just never heard such stories. Thailand is very safe. They just have very strict gun laws. It's almost impossible to get a gun in Thailand. Whereas in Mexico, you know, the bad guys have guns. That's just how it is. I would just say in Thailand, even if you're out late at night, don't worry. You know, if you have to take a taxi, if you have to take an Uber, if you have to walk, chances are you're not going to get robbed. It can happen, but it's much less likely to happen than in Mexico. Last but not least, let's talk about the COVID situation. We just got out of a pandemic and if we take a look, Mexico has been really open during the past two to two and a half years. You know, you could fly into Mexico without a COVID shot, without a negative test, just had to fill out the health form and that was it. It was very easy to get in, no questions asked, uh, no screening in most cases, so it was very open. Right now, the mask mandates are still in place, meaning if you go to like, in a supermarket or shopping mall, you're still supposed to wear a mask. And that hasn't really changed, even though in places like Vietnam, people don't wear masks anymore. But generally speaking, I think Mexico took a much more liberal stance, you know, during the pandemic than Thailand did. In Thailand, you know, the country was closed for tourism for months during certain periods. Then they opened up again, requiring, you know, a COVID shot, you know, and quarantine or a test and quarantine. It changed so many times. Thailand is open again. They removed the test and go program, which is great. Anybody can go to Thailand now. It's fully open and you can enjoy the paradise again. Which of the discussed countries do you like or want to visit? Leave a comment below and let us know. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm uploading new videos on digital nomad locations, travel updates, and investment advice several times a week right now. I highly recommend that you grab a free copy of my latest ebook, The Nomad Elite Income Booster, your go-to guide for creating passive income streams using the internet. And if you got some more time left, check out these 
these videos. Thank you for watching.